All right, this is the 2020 AOIME, which is also known as the AIME2. Um, problem number seven. Two congruent right circular cones, each with base radius three and height eight, have axes of symmetry that intersect at right angles at a point in the interior of the cones, a distance three from the base of each cone. What? Confusing, right? So what we want to do is start by just drawing one cone, right? Two cones is hard enough, but one cone, that's not that bad. We can do one cone. Let's try and draw one cone. Make kind of an oval. And then uh, think about this distance is supposed to be three from the center to here. That's the radius. And if that's three, then if I come up, that should be about three. And let's go another three, I guess. And then two more on top of that. So it should look something like this. Now, obviously, I mean, it's supposed to look kind of three dimensions and you can't get to be see-through it. If we made it solid, right, you wouldn't be able to see what's happening inside. So this is three and this is going to be eight going up, right? And what do they say about these cones? They, they intersect how? They're, they're axes of symmetry. The axis of symmetry on each one intersects the other at a right angle, right? So perpendicular like this. Where, though, um, at a point in the interior of the cones, a distance three from the base of each cone. So let's just use this one, and we'll go up the same distance. About here is about where they should intersect. And if it's going to be three from the base of that cone also, let's say it opens this way with the point going that way, then we already know that this radius is three. So if we want to draw a semi-accurate drawing, we can go up three here. This will be the center of the other cone. And we'll come about right here. Like this, the axis, axis of symmetry will pass right through there at a right angle. And since three is here, a couple more would be about right there. And we will connect here to here and down to here. Now, that's kind of a confusing looking drawing, especially when you're trying to picture it in three dimensions. So we're probably going to look to simplify in our mind a little bit what's happening because it's really hard for most people to visualize large 3D images. So, especially when they're getting like intersecting in that way. I've never seen a problem of two cones intersecting in this way. You see them intersect for conic sections, but not like this. Okay, so what now? This is 90 degrees, great. Um, a sphere, now they're throwing a sphere in there, with radius r lies inside both cones. Okay, great. If it wasn't difficult enough, now we're going through a sphere in there and it's somewhere in both cones. The maximum possible value for r squared is something, blah, 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 relatively prime, find the sum. Yeah, you get the ending, right? So we really just need to know what this radius is of the sphere that's inside both cones. So let's think for a second. If we just had one cone, right, one right circular cone, and you put a sphere inside of it. And remember, when it comes to spheres, all you have to sphere is sphere itself. All right, uh, that was horrible. I'm sure you've heard it before. Um, okay, so think about it. If you're going to be a certain distance, you're going to fit a sphere in here. Just go ahead and draw one real quick, right? Or basically a cross section of the sphere. And think about the properties of that great circle of the sphere, if you will. It's going to have a center. That center is going to be right on the axis of symmetry. So therefore, the center of the sphere for both cones would need to be on the axis of symmetry. And since it needs to be on the axis of symmetry of both cones, it must be their intersection point. Furthermore, if I move off of that axis of symmetry, say a little bit to this side, Yes, that would technically be farther from the side over here, creating a bigger radius, but you've moved it closer to this side, which isn't good for spheres. They wouldn't work out, right? It'd go out, yeah, that's not gonna, not gonna work exactly. So basically, if we slide the center of the sphere up off of this horizontal axis, or we slide it to the left or right of the vertical axis, it's gonna become necessarily closer to the outside of the cone when we do that. So the furthest distance from this point on the cone, for example, but that is also on the axis of symmetry, would need to extend at a right angle 
to the center of the sphere. Because why? Because the cone's going to hit like a tangent line, right? The outside of the cone to the center of the sphere, and that's going to make a right angle. So because of that, we don't really care about three dimensions. We can simply go for two dimensions, cross sections, if you will. And we can think of this like the following. Uh, I have, this is one cross section of one cone. To reduce complexity, I'm going to draw it outside. It's like this side of this cone, right? And the center of the sphere needs to be three off the bottom, meaning that this eight will actually be a five. And if this is the center of the sphere, because it's the furthest distance you can get, you know, from both cones at the same time, then how are we going to find how far it is from the side of the cone? Well, it's a cross section. The distance to here, right, if you picture what's going to happen in the cone, right, the center of the sphere is going to go off to the side, and it's also going to go off to the side over here, making 90 degree angles. And in three dimensions, that's going to create another circle above, right, kind of like this. So you get this other circle above, right? So it doesn't matter where I go at the cone, if I go here or here or here, it's the same distance, right? So we can just take any cross section we'll do, and this one will be just fine. And we want the distance perpendicular from the center of the sphere, right? There's a sphere here, and this is its center, which we didn't draw because we're not going to draw a three-dimensional sphere in that cluster F. So then uh, this is going to connect here like this at a right angle. Well, now it's just similar triangles. And those aren't that bad. Let's give it some letters. A, B, C, D, and E. And I like to make a similarity statement. I really like to make a similarity statement when we have 12 minutes per problem. So just don't screw it up. I mean, you've got the right idea, right? You're on the home stretch. So ABC, triangle ABC, needs to be similar to. Now, in both of these triangles, the A is in both, so I can just put the A in the same position. And then B is a 90 degree angle, and E is a 90 degree angle, so E goes second and D goes here. Great, now we're just going to make our proportional statements. That is AB over AE is equal to first two over first two equals second two over second two. BC over ED equals first and third over first and third. AC over AD. Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking for this, DE, right? So AB we already know is eight. And AE we don't really know that yet. So let's forget that one. AC uh, we can find that. If this is 8 and 3 by Pythagorean, 64 plus 9 is 73. So AC, this distance, is root 73. And we'll forget that approach. AC is root 73. AD comes down here. We've already labeled it as 5. BC is down here, and it's 3, and that leaves us with ED, which we're going to call X for simplifying purposes. Uh, cross multiply, and you're going to get 15 equals X root 73. So X is going to equal 15 over root 73. Conversely, you could reciprocal and multiply by 3. It does the same thing. So however you choose to end that is your choice, of course. Uh, so uh, what is X again? X is the distance from the center of the sphere to the side, hence it is the radius, right? The distance is always perpendicular, right? The closest distance. Um, so then this is the radius we're looking for, and what does it ask for? It asks us for r squared. So, and when they told you they're asking for r squared, you probably should have thought, hmm, there's probably a square root involved. And squaring it gets rid of that to make the ending possible. So we got exactly what we kind of intuited was going to happen. We now square to get 225 over 73. We add m and n, which is what it says to do. Are they relatively prime? Uh, 73 is a prime number, and it doesn't go into 225. So we're good. Uh, then this adds up to uh, 225 plus 73 is 298.